Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our latest coronavirus TV episode. It's Thursday, April 16th, and today I'm going to talk about herd immunity, coronavirus's reproductive number, and what both of those mean for vaccination. At this point, you've probably heard a lot about both herd immunity and the R0, or basic reproductive number, of coronavirus. I'm here today to explain how these two concepts are related and why they're important when considering vaccinations. As was mentioned in the previous vaccine video, a number of vaccine candidates are currently in development. Companies are using a wide variety of approaches to create these vaccines as they're still trying to figure out which structures on the virus we should be trying to build immunity against. The first commercial vaccines are expected in about 12 to 18 months. However, how are we going to know what percentage of the population will need to vaccinate? A key issue with vaccines is the herd immunity threshold. Essentially, what percentage of the population must be immune in order to successfully disrupt the chain of infection? And this brings me to R0, or the basic reproductive number. The basic reproductive number represents the number of people to whom each infected person will spread the disease absent any mitigation. Though there isn't enough data to definitively determine the R0 of COVID-19 due to inadequate testing, a number of estimates have been released. These estimates are constantly being updated as we learn more about the disease and as we gain a better understanding of the number of asymptomatic or less severe cases. These R0 estimates will become more accurate over time. Additionally, the basic reproductive number can vary between populations depending on a number of factors including population size, population density, and the mean number of contacts a person has per day. Researchers from Wuhan, China, estimated that the basic reproductive number among the first 425 cases of COVID-19 was 2.2. Other estimates for the basic reproductive number of COVID-19 have varied upward. They've ranged between 2.4 and 4.7. These estimates have been changing as we learn more about the disease and they'll continue to be revised as the full picture of the pandemic emerges. For example, the most recent estimate from the CDC for the Wuhan outbreak provides a median R0 figure of 5.7. To put these numbers in context, the R0 for measles is generally estimated to be between 12 and 18. And although it varies between strains, the R0 for influenza is typically estimated to be 0.9 to 2.1. In order to interrupt transmission, the effective reproductive number or the average number of secondary cases per infection in a population made up of both susceptible and non-susceptible hosts must be less than one. This means that each infected person on average transmits to fewer than one other person. The effective reproductive number is essentially the R0 multiplied by the fraction of the host population that is susceptible. And this is where the concepts of vaccination and herd immunity threshold come into play. While there are measures that we can take to interrupt transmission without vaccination, such as social distancing, herd immunity will eventually be required in order to resume daily life. If the threshold for herd immunity is surpassed, then the effective reproductive number will be less than one and transmission will be interrupted. And the easiest way to achieve herd immunity is through vaccination. As the percentage of the population that is already immune changes, so will these calculations. For the purpose of this episode, I'm going to keep everything simple and high level. A basic calculation for the herd immunity threshold is easy. It's just 1 minus 1 divided by the basic reproductive number. So for coronavirus, using the estimates available, the critical vaccination level would be between 54.5% if you use the Wuhan numbers and 78.7% using the highest values reported from Europe. And it would be around 83% if you use the most recent CDC estimate for the outbreak in Wuhan. Essentially, the higher the basic reproductive number, the higher the percentage of the population that will need to be vaccinated or immune in order to disrupt transmission. However, these percentages assume that a vaccine is 100% effective, conferring immunity to all recipients. If a vaccine only protects a proportion of individuals, the proportion of the population that would need to be vaccinated increases. So say a vaccine is 75% effective. 
For an R0 of 2.2, the critical vaccination level would increase from 54.5% to around 73%. Additionally, there are a number of other factors that may come into play in the future. For example, if immunity wanes over time, individuals may need to be revaccinated, or if the coronavirus mutates, we may need to adjust our vaccination strategy accordingly. It's also important to note that these figures don't take into account the number of people previously immune to the virus before the implementation of a vaccination program in a given population. We're learning new things every day about this virus and about this disease. By the time commercial vaccine candidates are available, our understanding will have continued to evolve. Increased testing, including serological testing, will help us better understand what the basic reproductive number is. Better data in general will help us refine predictive models. Combined with results from the current vaccine trials, we will have the information necessary to initiate a comprehensive and hopefully effective vaccination campaign. And that wraps up my explanation of the basic reproductive number, the herd immunity threshold, and why these concepts are important in determining if the vaccine will be effective. Thank you for listening and see you again on the next episode of Coronavirus TV.